Welcome to our presentation. Today, we are going to talk about RNA sequencing process and analysis. RNA sequencing reveals the presence and quantity of RNA in a biological sample at a specific developmental stage or physiological condition. This in turn reveals the molecular constituents of cells and tissues, as well as aids in understanding the development of diseases. First, I'm going to be talking about the process of RNA sequencing. There are many ways to perform RNA extraction, but today I'm going to talk about two of the most common methods, magnetic particle methods and organic extraction. Magnetic particle extraction utilizes small particles that contain a paramagnetic core and a modified surrounding shell to better bind to paramagnetic particles. Paramagnetic particles move when exposed to a magnetic field, but retain minimal magnetic memory once the field is removed. So these particles can be resuspended easily after they are collected, simply by removing the magnetic field. First, samples are lysed in a solution containing ribonuclease inhibitors and allowed to bind to magnetic particles. After being released, resuspended in washed solutions and recaptured multiple times, the RNA is released into a solution and the particles are removed. Method two, organic extraction. First, the sample is homogenized in a phenol containing solution. Then the sample is centrifuged during which the sample separates into three phases, a lower organic phase, a middle phase that contains denatured proteins and gDNA, and an upper aqueous phase that contains RNA. The upper aqueous phase is recovered and RNA is collected by alcohol precipitation and rehydration. This diagram depicts the workflow of RNA sequencing technology. As you can see in the outlined blue box, first long RNA strands are converted into a library of cDNA fragments. Second, through RNA or DNA fragmentation, sequencing adapters or tags are then attached to each cDNA fragment and sequence data is generated in a high throughput manner from both ends. On the diagram, the abbreviation EST stands for expressed sequence tag. Third, sequence reads are aligned with the reference genome or transcriptome. Fourth, divide into three types exonic reads, junction reads, and poly A end reads. A base resolution expression profile can then be generating, generated using these three types of sequence reads. On the diagram, the abbreviation ORF stands for open reading frame. Reading sequences is dominated by multiple different companies or platforms, including Illumina with a read length of 200 to 600 BP, and Pacific Biosciences SMRT with a read length of 15 to 20 KB. Now let's look into the bioinformatics section of this process. So the first thing to do uh, is to evaluate and uh, change the quality of, or increase the quality of the reads. So by doing, so we remove uh, low quality adapter and overrepresented sequences. So the way we uh, look at the quality of a sequenced read is through this uh, method, uh, where we look at nucleotide quality score, which is the probability that the base is read incorrectly. The formula is Q equals negative 10 log base 10 of P, where Q is a quality score and P is the estimated probability of the base call being wrong. So as Q increases, the probability of error decreases as shown by the table. If Q is very low, the chance of inaccurate conclusions is greatly increased and the sequences need costly validation experiments for reliable use. This also provides, or this also proves the high quality of bases uh, sequenced by Illumina as a majority of them yield over a, a Q30 score and are incorrect less than 0.1% of the time. However, we can't just find the quality for the entire sequence using one calculation. P increases towards the three prime end of reads, so we must calculate the quality for each base. If the quality is too low, one should remove that base or improve mappability. This is fine though. Even if one or a few bases are removed from one end, the alignment algorithms will still work properly. The next thing to look into is adapter sequences, which are mainly used by Illumina and uh, include different sequences ligated to the 5' and 3' ends of each cDNA molecule before sequencing. 
removing them from reads computationally is very time consuming and research shows that only about 0.2% to 2% of the actual reads contain adapter sequences. So this has caused controversy on whether this step is necessary or not. Looking at the picture, the five prime adapter sequences are on the right and three prime sequences are on the left. The sequences on the five prime end are not in the read since they tell the sequencer where to start the sequencing cycle, which means reading one nucleotide at a time to the sequencer. The sequences on the three prime end, however, may or may not be sequenced depending on the length of the DNA fragment, also called the insert length and the number of sequencing cycles. In the top sequence, uh, the insert length is greater than the number of sequencing cycles. So the sequencer just reads the first 200 nucleotides of the fragment. However, in the bottom sequence, the insert length is less than the number of sequencing cycles. Uh, the read includes all 100 uh, nucleotides of the fragment, but also contains the first 100 nucleotides of the adapter sequence. Due to the immense time consumption of removing adapter sequences, researchers and scientists don't want to undergo this process. So they will only uh, do uh, adapter sequence removal if dealing with small fragments such as those from micro uh, RNAs. The last thing to look into is overrepresented sequences which is a list of sequences that appears more than expected in the file. The first 50 base pairs of each sequence are compared to a list of common first 50 base pair sequences to try and identify it. In RNA sequencing, it is possible that there are some overrepresented sequences. Micro RNAs, for instance, would be abundantly overrepresented because they average 22 nucleotides. So you can't just throw out a read if it's true. So um, uh, overall, uh, quality control removes, uh, conditionally of course, adapter sequences and always looks into low quality reads and uh, removes uncalled bases. And the tools that do so include FASTQC and Trimomatic. Another way scientists compare genome sequences is with read map mapping and alignment. As shown in the diagram, read mapping aligns the reads on a reference genome, allowing mismatches and more about read mapping. So read mapping is used when scientists know the reference genome. It maps the reads to the genome or transcriptome. With read mapping, knowledge of the transcribed or spliced regions in eukary eukaryotes is not required. Overall, the read mapping allows for discovery of new and unannotated transcripts. So more about read alignment. Scientists use read alignment when the reference genome is unknown. During this process, reads are assembled into contiguous sequences. Prokaryotes are easily able to undergo this process because they do not undergo RNA processing. These contiguous sequences formed during read alignment are expressed as transcriptomes and undergo read mapping against the transcriptome. Now I'm going to talk about some issues that arrive with eukaryotic alignment. A few factors complicate the alignment process. In eukaryotic organisms, first, mRNA undergo RNA processing before being sequenced during which most genes are split between exons, coding genes, and introns, non-coding genes. In RNA processing, the introns are moved and the exons are grouped together. This means each reach could be a portion of one exon or split between multiple exons, which have different places in the genome. The latter read is called a junction read. Furthermore, in this process, alternative splicing, which is a form of gene expression that may selectively remove specific exons along with introns may occur. Therefore, one cannot assume each junction read occurs between exons in order of their genome. So here are a few of the alignment tools and how they work. Top hat. So top hat aligns RNA sequence reads to large, large size genomes, then analyzes the results in order to identify RNA splice sites. Clustal Omega quickly and effectively aligns three or more sequences. Blixum is an interactive browser of sequence alignments that stacks up multiple alignments. And Dotter is an alignment tool that uses a graphical dot matrix to offer detailed comparison of two sequences. Moving on to the data analysis point uh, part of our presentation. Data analysis is crucial to any experiment and helps researchers organize and display data that would normally be impossible. The first 
topic in data analysis will be quantification of genes. The simple way to quantify gene expression in RNA sequencing would be to count the number of reads that map to each gene. This is a gene level quantification approach that utilizes the gene transfer format. Uh, raw reads in this approach count, uh, raw read counts are affected by factors like transport length and total number of reads. Thus, one needs to use a unit RPKN, which stands for reads per kilobase of exon model per, per million reads, and its derivative form FPKN, which stands for fragments per kilobase of exon model per million reads maps, to account for and compensate for these issues. Knowing the difference in length between reads allows for more in-depth analysis of gene sequences, making it easier to find dis uh, discrepancies and or anomalies in said sequences. Uh, tools such as HTSeq count are able to use this approach. Moving on to differential gene expression analysis. So what is differential gene expression analysis? Uh, it is taking normalized read count data and performing analysis to determine quantitative changes in gene sequences throughout experimental groups. There are many tools which can achieve this goal. Uh, four of them are EDGE-R, DESSEQ, BASEQ, and EBSEQ. Methods uh, like EDGE-R and DSEQ are based on negative binomial distribution. On the other hand, BASEQ and EBSEQ are Bayesian approaches based on a negative binomial model. It's very important to consider the design of one's experiment before implementing an analysis method, as some methods can only compare one pair of uh, sequences at a time, while other methods are capable of comparing multiple sequences at the same time. After going through an analysis method, one will be able to locate the specific area that show anomalies and or different arrangements in nucleotides and prepare to organize that information. Uh, moving on to interpretation of gene expression data. Um, interpretations such as heat maps, which, are, which is the example shown here, can be used with other an uh, analysis methods other than RNA sequencing. So it's not specific to RNA sequencing. Heat maps can also be combined with clustering uh, based on similarity of gene expression. Combining heat maps and clustering can be very beneficial as it can be used to identify commonly regulated genes or biological signatures that are related to a particular condition, such as an environment or a disease. Heat maps are also very useful as RNA se sequencing generates large amounts of data, and heat maps are able to organize all of that data into a presentable and understandable fashion. After displaying the gene expression of individuals who are healthy versus the individuals who are diseased, one can easily see the differences in gene expression and will be able to organize and locate the specific gene or genes that have been changed. Here are our citations. And thank you for listening to our presentation.